Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at another historic deck, this time a mono white angel life gain deck featuring some of the life gain cards we got in the Anthology expansion. And one of those is Soul Warden, a great addition for the life gain archetype as a one mana 1-1 one -one creature saying whenever another creature enters a battlefield we gain one life. So that also includes opposing creatures entering the battlefield which is great as we will very quickly start gaining a ton of life. And that's of course what our deck is uh, planning to do since we've got a lot of uh, great payoff cards for having a lot of life. And one of those is another one of the Anthology cards, Sarah Ascendant, a one mana 1-1 one -one lifelink saying as long as we have 30 or more life, Sarah Ascendant gets plus 5 plus 5 and has flying. So it can potentially be a 1 mana 6-6 six, six with flying and lifelink, which is quite a bargain. And getting up to 30 life in this deck should not be a problem since we've got a ton of ways to gain life. And then we also have a bit of an angel sub-theme in the deck, which is pronounced by the addition of Bishop of Wings, a 2-mana 1-4, saying whenever an angel enters the battlefield under our control, we gain 4 life. So that's another great way to get up to 25, 30, even 35 life for cards like Ajani, Strength of the Pride, which we will get to in a second. And whenever an angel we control dies, we also get to make a 1-1 spirit creature token with flying, which will once again trigger Soul Warden and make sure we have a nice board presence. So let's take a look at the entire deck. The only other one drop we still have to look at is Leonin Vanguard, a 1 mana 1-1 one, one cat soldier, saying at the beginning of combat on our turn, if we control 3 or more creatures, Vanguard gets plus 1 plus 1 until end of turn, and we gain 1 life, and it's the gain 1 life that we're mostly interested in, so this is a repeatable way for us to gain life. Then at 2 mana, one of the great payoffs in the deck is a Jani Sprite Mate, a 2 mana 2-2 two -two saying whenever we gain life, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on a Jani Sprite Mate, and when we have all these incremental ways of gaining life, especially Soul Warden, which can trigger multiple times in the same turn, even the opponent's turn, the Jani Sprite Mate can very quickly turn into this giant threat that will have to be dealt with. Then of course we've got our four copies of Bishop of Wings, and we've got a total of 10 angels in the deck to synergize with it, and most of them are at 3 mana, so we've got the full playset of a Resplendent Angel, which is another payoff for gaining life, as a 3 mana 3-3 three, three flying angel saying, at the beginning of each end step, if we gained 5 or more life this turn, create a 4-4 four, four white angel creature token with flying and vigilance, so if we can curve a turn 1 either Leonin Vanguard or Soul Warden, into a turn 2 Bishop of Wings, into a turn 3 Resplendent Angel, we will gain 4 life from the Bishop of Wings, 1 additional life from either Soul Warden or Leonin Vanguard, so that means we'll gain 5 life by turn 3 and make a 4-4 four, four Angel token right away, which will once again trigger the Bishop of Wings, so we'll gain a ton of life right away and have a nice board presence going. So this is a great card in the deck and you can quickly see how the Resplendent Angel can get out of hand, and then if you're ever flooding out for 6 mana you can also give the Angel plus 2 plus 2 and lifelink, which will of course also help you gain 5 life in the same turn if you can attack with it and have it survive. So just a great staple in this deck when we're playing the Bishop of Wings package. And then we also have the full playset of Angel of Vitality, which is a 3 mana 2-2 two -two flyer, saying whenever we would gain life, we gain that much life plus 1 instead. So once again, if we have a lot of ways to incrementally gain life with cards like Soul Warden, this will very quickly add up, since now we're gaining 2 life instead of just 1 for each creature entering the battlefield. And then Angel of Vitality gets plus 2 plus 2, as long as we have 25 or more life, turning it into a 3 mana 4-4 four -four flyer, which is quite good. And getting up to 25 life from 20 as our starting life total is not too difficult when we have this many ways of gaining life. And then at 4 mana, we've got Ajani, Strength of the Prime, which is also a great card in this archetype as a Planeswalker, starts out at 5 loyalty. And we're usually going to use the minus 2 first, making a 2-2 two -two essentially Ajani's Pride Mate token. It has the same exact text as Ajani's Pride Mate, so we'll very quickly get out of hand. And we can make two of those tokens before having to plus again. And the plus is quite good here too, since we gain life equal to the number of creatures we control plus the number of planeswalkers we control. So that will also help us get up to those various uh, thresholds needed for our creatures to become better. And then the zero ability, which we can get to if we have 35 life, that's uh, 50 more than our starting life total. 
We can exile a Jani, strengthen the pride and each artifact and creature your opponent's control. So this can turn into a one-sided sweeper to win the game on the spot. And again, getting up to 35 if you've got uh, Angel of Vitality going, if you've got your Bishop of Wings and Soul Wardens going is uh, not too difficult. And then uh, running out the deck, we have two copies of Conclave Tribunal as kind of a versatile removal spell. Has Convoke so we can tap some of our cheaper creatures to help pay for it and then exile target non-land permanent and opponent controls until Tribunal leaves the battlefield. And then last but not least, two copies of Lyra Dawnbringer, a 5 mana, 5-5 five, five, legendary angel with a flying first strike and lifelink, giving other angels we control plus one plus one and lifelink. So a great curve topper to have alongside our other angels, especially Resplendent Angel, as Lyra Dawnbringer can generate an additional 4-4 token just by attacking once. And then if we already have a 4-4 token, it will turn it into a 5-5 five, five token, which will also have lifelink, so it can uh, keep generating more tokens all by itself. And then looking at our mana base, very simple. The full playset of Castle Ardenvale as a mana sink against some more controlling decks. We can start generating some 1 1 tokens, which will also trigger Soul Warden and then 20 basic planes. So, yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. All right, we're on the draw. Our hands, like playable if unexciting. Saracen and not the best synergy with the uh, Bishop of Wings necessarily if we don't have any angels. But uh, yeah, I'll try it. Definitely a lot of cards that would turn this hand into something quite good. And yeah, Resplendent Angel is one of them. Especially if uh, I get to connect with the Saracens in the turn we play the Resplendent Angel. Opponent on some sort of Junt deck. And it could be worth it to sacrifice our Sarah Ascendant just to get that Angel token going. But yeah, this is perfect. Can even attack into the Paradise Druid. So let's do that. Don't even have to show them that we have a Resplendent Angel first. And there we go. It's turn three and we have Pretty decent board state, I would say. Rekindling Phoenix, all right. That matches up quite well against our 3-3 and 4-4 Angels. But uh, Conclave Tribunal is a good way to get rid of it, so... What's our play here? How about a second Resplendent Angel? And then a Conclave Tribunal. Getting rid of Phoenix. Attacking for 10 and making two more Angels. Which will trigger the Bishop Wings two more times. And then next turn Najani can uh, use the ultimate right away to exile the opponent's board. So yeah, drawing those Resplendent Angels definitely improved our hand quite a bit. And we got to a 6-6 Sarascendant on turn 3, which is all we can hope for. Sweet, on to the next one. All right, we're on the play, and yeah, this seems fine. We're missing the one drop to go with our bishop to gain five the turn we play Resplendent Angel, but I could play Angel of Vitality first, and then playing Angel will uh, gain us five. Facing a turn one Pelt Collector. Ooh, if we can get to five mana for Lyra with all these Angels, that's going to be pretty good too. So points on Gruul, turn to Burning Tree Emissary. All right. Uh, let's see what they can do. Paradise Druids. We will have a 4-4 Angel of Vitality, so not the easiest for my opponent to kill. And if we can keep it that way, the Respond Angel next turn is going to be pretty good. All right, second burning tree, a Lunar Elves, so opponent has a lot of mana, but only two lands in play, so they could still have some expensive cards sitting in their hand. And yeah, we're just gonna drop this Resplendent Angel, gain five. Don't think I need to Tribunal anything, and we can probably start attacking. Gain four more life. 
So turn 4 and we're already at 35 and next turn Lyra Dawnbringer is going to be the cherry on top. Do have to watch out for like an Amber Cleave here. I don't think I need to block. I'm okay if I take uh, a bit of damage since we can just race back thanks to the lifelink from Lyra. It's going to be a second main questing beast. So it definitely implies that they have a uh, trick of some sort in hand, like an Amber Cleave, and they were just hoping we would block there. But, uh, yeah. Points at two. We're at a million life, and we've got a lot of angels. And yeah, even Amber Cleave's not good enough here. Sweet, on to the next one. All right, we're on the draw. What do we think of this hand? Um, it's not great, since we're missing kind of the Bishop of Wings to really turn this hand on, and uh, the Ascendant. Not the best if we don't have the uh, Bishop of Wings or like a Soul Warden to start gaining a ton of life. But then again, it's also not a terrible hand. It's got mana, it's got spells. So we'll keep. Best draw, of course, would be the Bishop of Wings but also an early Ajani Sprite mate could be good. Facing turn one Lanner Elves of Temple Garden, another Temple Garden and a Mara. So some sort of green-white token deck. Ooh, nice. Rizzo Redeemed making an appearance too. All right, so we don't have much going on this turn. And yeah, this MRA is going to start beating down. So we'll be on the back foot to start off this game. Gotta hope the Resplendent Angel can block and then uh, take over from there. Alright, Burning Triamissary, so... Don't know if they're dipping into reds. Looks like they might be Tajik. Alright, so just a nice Naya aggro deck here. Yeah, we don't have any good blocks, so we're taking seven. It's a lot of damage. So yeah, I'm just gonna play a Resplendent Angel and then... Hope to make some blocks, but if they have a piece of interaction to get rid of it... We're gonna be in trouble. Heroic Reinforcements, wow. Okay, well, kind of got wrecked here. Uh, we might just be dead. So I could block here. They can give it first strike at least. And then... Chump taking... Uh, yeah, more than lethal, so good games. All right, we're on the draw. This hand is pretty weak since we don't have any way of actually gaining life. So most of our cards don't do anything. This is better. And what do we bottom? Could just put the more expensive card on the bottom here, a Jani. But uh, I think I'm just gonna be a bit greedy, bottom the tribunal. And keep all our creature synergies to make sure the vanguards can uh, gain us life reliably. Knight of Ebon Legion. Drawing second to Jani is not great if we don't draw the lands. I'll play Sarah Ascendant since that way we can maybe attack them back if they attack us. Opponent seems to be black white vampires. Alright, never mind. I guess they're black white knights instead since this is also a knight. Right, land is good. So we don't really want to trade Saracen for bodyguards, just because I need the critical mass of creatures to go with my vanguards. Even though technically I would be okay with the trades. All 
So we'll take the damage. They might pump. Just for one. And the Midnight Reaper added to the board. Pretty good synergy with the Bodyguard too, since you can sacrifice it to trigger the Reaper. We're gonna play Angel, which is gonna gain us two life thanks to the Vanguard here. And don't think we're attacking quite yet. Next turn a Jani make a token, it's gonna be good if the Vanguard's still around. Smith and Swordmaster drains us for three. Haven't seen this art before, pretty cool. And do they pump the knight? They do, that's fine. We'll be able to make up all this uh, lost life in a second here, especially if we can find land five for Lyra. For now, just make a token. And as I don't intend to block with Angel Vitality, I might as well attack with it. And then they might use some resources attacking a Jani. And we might just play another one and let the first one go, we'll see. Just Knight of Evil Legion going after a Jani. That's fine. I'll make them use their entire turn pumping the knight if they want to kill it. And a swordmaster as well. And yeah, I guess we'll just play Lyra now. Great blocker with the first strike and... Can gain a bit of extra life with Angel Vitality too. And slowly but surely the Ajani's Pride Mate token here is gonna turn into a giant threat. No Valiant Knights, alright. Giving Knights plus one plus one. Can also give them double strike for five mana. But I don't think they have any good attacks this turn. Alright, so let's see. Can we get up to 35 life to then use a Jani's zero ability to exile the opponent's board? We're currently at 21. We'll gain 2 from Vanguard up to 23. If we attack with our life linkers, Lyra will hit first thanks to first strike. And that will gain 6 thanks to the Angel Vitality putting us up to 29, and then at that point uh, Angel actually grows up to a 5-5 five, five lifelinker instead of just a 3-3, three, three. so then we should already be at 35. So let's double check here since this is pretty important. So 21, 2 Vanguard up to 23, 6 from Lyra up to 29, and then another 6 from Angel Vitality, 35, and then we also gain 2 from Sarah Sennant, and it will be a 6-6 six, six after damage is done. So yeah, let's get in there. And I guess my opponent could prevent the life gain from Saracenant by blocking with Dauntless Bodyguard and sacking it before damage. But again, thanks to the Angel Vitality growing after first strike damage, we should get up to 35 no matter what, and then a Jani exiling the opponent's board should be game over. But uh, no, they're just gonna block with the Smith and Swordmaster, so after damage here, the Saracendant should actually still survive. And yeah, opponent takes it. And yeah, as we can see, Saracendant is 6 6 with uh, 3 damage marked on it. And now we can simply play a Jani, use a 0 ability, and. That should be pretty much game over.
All right, sweet. We got there. On to the next one. All right, so we're on the draw. This hand's not great. We're missing maybe an extra life gain enabler to go with this. Saracen's not a great enabler. It's more of a payoff. But of course, it can sometimes gain life. Would definitely be a great hand if we draw Bishop of Wings, exactly, but that's only a 4 off. Soul Warden would be okay. So there's definitely a couple cards that can improve this hand, but as is, I'm not a huge fan. This hand has some issues as well. Double Castle's a little awkward, but definitely has more life gain enablers here, so we'll keep it and then. Do we bottom a Resplendent Angel? Probably. Since I kind of need the Angel of Vitality to help me gain 5 in the same turn with Resplendent Angel. Drawing a Plains is great. Because yeah, without Angel of Vitality, it's kind of difficult to get up to 5 life gains with just Soul Warden and Vanguard. Turn to Paradise Roots. Start padding our life total here. I could potentially attack with Soul Warden and they might take it, but I don't care about getting in one point of damage here. Soul Warden's just too important as an enabler. Alright, turn three questing beasts, that's okay. So we'll play Angel of Vitality first. And then next turn, I'm gonna gain two from Respondent Angel entering the battlefield, two more from the Vanguard, so we need one more way of gaining life to make our first Angel. So another Vanguard or Soul Warden will do it. Ooh, Wicked Wolf, that's too bad. It's gonna take out the Soul Warden. And a Gilded Goose. Alright, I guess I'll settle for an Ajani's Pride Mate here. Play that first. And then... Might as well attack with the Angel Vitality since I'm not blocking with it. And we're getting close to maybe being able to play Angel and then use the ability on the Angel to gain a bunch of life. For now, we'll take it. Opponent definitely showing a lot of respect for Soul Warden killing it over the Angel Vitality. Both, of course, would be quite valuable. Another Goose. And a Teferi. It's pretty good against our Jenny's Pride Mates, but they're gonna bounce Angel Vitality, so we can't threaten the Fairy. Alright. Think, let's see, probably play a Resplendent Angel at this point, so we can next turn use the ability. Don't think I bother attacking Teferi. We kind of need to get our Pride Mate big enough where it can block the Wicked Wolf from the opponents. But that's still gonna take a while, especially with double goose making food. So I could also decide to just trade off for this Questing Beast, since that one will keep attacking for quite some time. Would be pretty bad if they then have another removal spell because then I might struggle to get three creatures for Leonin Vanguard to gain life. I think I just trade for the Questing Beast. Of course, that's bad if they have another one in hand. But I think the plan here is to win with Angel beatdown. So I just want to mitigate the amount of damage we take on the ground. Johnny's Strength of the Pride's not bad. 
But I think we're going all in on Resplendent Angel here. And then next turn if I draw land I can play both. I really hope they don't have some sort of instant speed interaction here. So we get our first angel token. And next turn we should be able to kill Teferi before they can bounce a token. That's more like it. And well, opponent just explodes, they can deal with the resplendent angel. They were gonna lose Teferi, and we were gonna keep making more tokens, so. Yeah, Resplendent Angel, if it goes unanswered, can definitely run away with the game, so glad we held on to it instead of playing it first into a potential uh, Wicked Wolf. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with an excellent looking hand. Don't have a great way to make an Angel token with the Resplendent Angel right away, but eventually Lara Dombringer will uh, help us with it. Play a Pride Mates. This opponent might be on some sort of uh, Knight Tribal deck, which uh, might play a lot of creatures to help us grow the Pride Mates. For now, we'll just play the Angel. And I guess we'll start getting in there. And we've got land 5 lined up here for Lara. Banalish Marshal, that's fine. I'll take 3. Vanguard's not bad. I think I'm okay getting a bit aggressive here. I don't have any cards that relies on me having a certain life total, so I can take a few hits and get in some damage. Point already down to 6, and that's even before we slam down this Lara Dombringer. And then if we get up to 6 mana, we can also just activate Resplendent Angel. But yeah, having a turn 1 Soul Warden against an opposing creature swarm deck is quite powerful, since it just means you will gain a ton of life to start a game with, and especially with the Janice Prime Mates, that means a lot of triggers. Alright, there's a red mana, so they are indeed Boros, Knights, and a Loxodon. Doesn't that put them dead on board, since we can just attack with everyone now? They chump Pride Mate, take 6, but Lyra Dawnbringer is gonna make that 7. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a pretty decent hand. No angels to go with the bishop quite yet, but we could draw them and we have three mana already. And uh, otherwise, Vanguard into Pride made into more creatures is a good start. Might actually play Sarah first, because we're on the play, so we're somewhat likely to hit once with the Sarah and then. We'll grow the Pride Mate right away, and then when we play the Vanguard, we'll gain life in the same turn that we play it. Temple of Triumph. Lara Dawnbringer is going to be exciting if we can get to it. Next turn we can go Bishop plus Vanguard. Opponent on some sort of Jeskai deck, but yeah, we're going to be able to grow the Pride Mates out of uh, Deafening Clarion range next turn. So that's nice. Let's go Bishop and Vanguard. If 
five five primate already. Do they have a clarion? Just a Teferi. All right. Can reset the primates. But we can just replay it, and it will still grow out of uh, clarion range. And we'll take out Teferi. And next turn, Lara Dawnbringer is going to gain us four with the Bishop of Wings. At which point the Saracendant will also be a 6-6. Six, six. This is their last chance to maybe kill it with a cheap burn spell. Fires of Invention, alright. Do they have a Sweeper 2 here? Royal Science. Don't think that's going to do it. A quest of mystery. Getting four with Lyra, one more with the Vanguard, and then we should have lethal here. Exactly enough life to turn on our Saracendant and swing for the win. Sweet, so that was a pretty clean victory. So yeah, this uh, Mono White Angel Life Gain deck, definitely capable of some insane draws. If you can start with the Soul Warden, the Bishop of Wings enables some very powerful things, especially with the Resplendent Angel. Just a ton of intrinsic synergies and the power level is quite high if everything comes together. So definitely recommend it if you want to take it for a spin. So that's going to be it for me today. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.